Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the last lesson in Unit 10, the Roaring Twenties. So what we're going to end up talking about today in the last lesson in the Roaring Twenties and what were the causes and effects of changes in South Carolina and our nation in the 1920s. A lot of the changes during the Royal Twenties not only took place nationally, but we're going to see them locally in South Carolina. And South Carolina is actually going to play a role in a lot of different national events, a lot of national cultural ideals. In class, what we're going to end up doing is dividing these new things during the Royal tw during the uh, Roaring Roaring Twenties of politics, the economy culture and technology changes during the Royal Twenties. We're going to see the 18th Amendment, which was prohibition, which made it illegal to distribute and sell and sometimes drink booze. As we see here, moonshiners. We know that moonshiners would play a major role in the cultural viewpoint of South Carolina, as well as later on the creation of NASCAR. Bootleggers here seeing busted with all their booze. We also see the 19th Amendment, which provided women with the right to vote. We call these ladies here who are fighting for the right to vote the suffragettes. Now, women would try new styles, and actually, more and more of them would graduate from college. They would become more and more free as time passes by. New consumer goods are going to pop up, such as the refrigerator and the washing machine. The automobile is going to become, and become very commonplace. In fact, here is a Ford Model T. You could get it in any color possible, as long as it was black. The good old airplane is going to start taking off at this time, literally. The automobile and mass transit would allow the suburbs to develop. Think of the suburbs as you know, like little mini developments of housing communities like Neely Farms. The trolley system is going to take off in cities like Chicago. Um, Greenville's going to have a trolley for a short time. San Francisco's trolley still runs today for all the tourists out there. The Jazz Age and what we think about jazz is going to be created during this time. And it actually started with African Americans. They took their native music and they evolved it to involve what was going on at the times. New dances would happen, and as I said in the beginning, South Carolina would play a role in the creation of new cultural ideals that not only affect South Carolina, but the nation as a whole, and the Charleston is actually one of those dances. The Big Apple nightclub, which existed in Columbia, would become so famous that New Yorkers would steal it and it would New York would become the Big Apple and it was a dance that was so well known that everybody loved it. Uh, the flappers uh, described women who dressed like this who were rather risque who were independent thinkers independent women. We also have the birth of movies, not only silent movies, but some of the first audio movies as well. Uh, Charlie, Charlie Chaplin was one of the number one people out there, as well as the birth of good old Mickey Mouse, as you see in the upper right-hand corner. Listening to the radio became the number one form of entertainment at home. Now families were all huddled up around the radio, listening to the news of what was going on, as well as... Radio shows, like we think of TV shows now, just think of it like a radio show where you had to sit and listen and really think. We also see the Southern Literary Renaissance where Southern literary authors are going to write about what the South is really like because for the longest time a lot of people viewed South Carolina as a cultural wasteland. 
uh, people like Julia Perkins and Debo Hayward would create such great works that they'd actually end up being adopted into operas such as Porgy and Bess. However, it wasn't all good times. Uh, we had the Red Summer of 1919, which involved a quite a few race riots between whites and blacks. It was not the most peaceful times between the races. We also see the resurgence after World War I of the KKK. The KKK was anti-black, anti-immigrant, anti-Catholic, anti-Jew, and it was such a strong organization that it actually became a national organization. During this time period of the 1920s is when we see the KKK at its strongest levels in history. Ever since then, it's been kind of like a roller coaster up and down, but this was the strongest that it had ever been as we see a march on Washington, D.C. Paved roads are going to increase tourism not only in South Carolina, but throughout the entire nation. It's going to allow people to view and visit places that they had never seen before. Uh, we're going to see a resurgence in the city of Charleston. We're going to see brand new fashion, brand new styles is probably one of the most fashionable times to be around because all the brand new styles. One of the major styles that was there at the time was what we call Art Deco. And it was not only in how people dressed, but it was in the music. It was in the buildings. It was in the art. It was in cars. You could see the style, this Art Deco, very symmetrical, round, smooth, and just very pretty stuff. Now politics are going to be uh, changing the 1920s as well. We have what we call blue laws and it made it illegal to sell consumer goods on Sundays because of religious points of view. We have the compulsory education which meant we had to come to school at least seven months out of the year now. Uh, prohibition as I said earlier was illegal to make, sell, or transport alcohol. And we have the 19th Amendment, which finally gives, finally gives women the right to vote. The economic changes are going to exist quite a bit. People now had money. They had spare money. They saw an increase in wages. We see installment plans, which are going to be very, very dangerous. And an installment plan is you could buy consumer goods with borrowed money. Think of it like credit cards. And this is going to lead forward to our Great Depression because we're borrowing so much money we can't pay ourselves back. Overproduction of consumer goods did not slow down after World War I. So we had way too many goods going out. We have people buying on credit. This is going to lead up to good old 1929. We see a boost in tourism which made it possible by paved roads and people making more money. Charleston hotels are going to become tourist locations. We see national historic preservations in our state. And, of course, drought, erosion. The good old bull weevil is going to make it hard for farmers. Culture, adult education. People are becoming more and more literate, and they're wanting to learn. They have the time to learn. Jazz was the music of the time. It was new, upbeat music featuring brass instruments. And it came from the African-American culture first, and then the white culture would change it and make it even more popular. The dances such as the Big Apple and the Charleston, the revival, unfortunately, of the KKK, the anti-immigration ideals, especially of the anti-immigration ideals of, German, of the German people, of not allowing German people in, moonshiners, which make it illegal to produce alcohol, but moonshiners found a way. The bootleggers are actually going to be transporting moonshiners booze. And we see giant spinning sprees, as we said earlier, building the creation of brand new inventions and luxury items. People are going to buy goods on credit. Flappers would be considered, in quotes, the modern woman. New fashions, attitudes, 
people were very carefree at the time and they, they were just like they're living for the day they were not living for tomorrow immigration and the great migration thousands of african americans leave the south because of discrimination however we see immigration a lot of Europeans, especially during this time, Southern and Eastern Europeans coming into the Northeast as well as the Midwest of America. The Southern literary, literary Renaissance, many new writers would pop up during this time to celebrate Southern heritage. Uh, poetry Society, New Southern Poets, and the Harlem Renaissance. Technologically speaking, the automobile becomes the accessible form of transportation. The trolley system, which allowed people to live even further away if they couldn't afford a car. The suburbs would be born in this time, and they're essentially neighborhoods outside of the main city. Uh, radio would provide news and entertainment within the home. The first radio station in South Carolina actually started in 1930. We see the building of dams, which would create and provide hydroelectric power. Electricity would bring itself to more and more homes. Uh, vacuum cleaners, refrigerators, washing machines, all made life easier for the housewife, as well as the women who were doing the job of cleaning the house and taking care of the house. They had more free time, which means they could think more and more on their own. Running hot water. Nice, nice thing that was uh, built during this time. The first water heaters were made during this time. Sanitation systems are going to help die down or back off some of the nasty diseases from unsanitary cities. Movies were a form of cheap entertainment. We see the growth of Hollywood, or back then it was called Hollywood Land. And paved roads are going to increase tourism in South Carolina and bring people together. What words would you use to describe the Roaring Twenties? I want you to think, have the Roaring Twenties ever happened again? Something similar to the Roaring Twenties. Think about it and write it down. And remember, go back, watch the video again, and think about to yourself, what are the major points in each one of those four categories? And what questions do you have? Make sure to write it all down and come prepared tomorrow with that information to discuss.